Okay, hello everyone. So I'm here with the new paper. Uh, this is uh, paper five, planning analysis evaluation, paper five two, May, June, 2021. So the question one is, a student investigate the heating of a solid metal cylinder. Figure 1.1 shows the cylinder of the cross-sectional area, capital A and the height A. The student places the cylinder and the electric heater in the beaker of the water. The electric heater is switched on. And uh, time T is measured for the certain temperature of the water, delta theta. The number of the cylinders of the same material, but with a different cross-section area are available. It is suggested that T and A are related by PT, AHW delta theta plus Z delta theta, where P is the power, W and Z are the constant, design a lab experiment to test the relationship between T and A, explain how your result could be used to determine the value of the W and Z, okay? So first of all, we have to write the definition of the problem. So I have already solved the question. So this is the definition of the problem. So first we have to write the independent variable. So area of the cylinder is the independent variable because we have to change this. And then the time T to get the change of temperature is dependent variable. So these two important independent variable, dependent variable, and the constants are the change of the temperature for all cylinders is kept constant. You can also add the power of the heater, height of the cylinder, but the change of the temperature is very, very important. And the next heading is the diagrams. Look at the diagrams. So first you have to draw the beaker at the water bath. Then you have to show the cylinder. You have to label it either lab thermometer or thermocouple thermometer, I mean the liquid in glass thermometer or this, but it's better to draw the thermocouple thermometer, then the circuit for the heater, voltage, current, variable resistor, switch, and this, you, but you have to label each and everything. This is the vernier caliper, because we have to measure the diameter, then area, stopwatch to measure the time, and different cylinders mean height same, but the area difference. So this is the minimum requirement of the diagram. Now move to the next procedure. Operators is assembled as shown in the diagram, or in the diagram. Uh, diameter of the selector cylinder is measured with the vernier caliper. Then area is calculated by using the formula. A is equal to pi by four diameter square because area is equal to pi r square and pi. Radius is diameter by two, so we can write pi diameter square over four, so pi by four diameter square. Cylinder is placed in a beaker containing water. Then the temperature of the water is recorded by the thermometer, and then mean the initial temperature, then heater is switched on and stopwatch is started for the certain selected temperature rise. Time is recorded, for example, room temperature 25 to 30, 25 to 40, 25 to 50, and then, whole procedure is repeated with different cylinders, but the delta theta is kept constant and throughout the experiment, the power of the heater is kept constant by looking at the reading of the ammeter and the voltmeter. So this is the procedure. Okay, next heading is the tabulation. So First number of observation, then D1, D2, D average, then area from this. You could write this in centimeter square, meter square, and then time, and keep two boxes empty for further physical quantities required. And then the heading is the data analysis. So first of all, we have to change the given equation into linear form. So look, this is P times T. So T is dependent, so we have to keep it one side. Then P is divided here. So this portion is the gradient, and this is the y-intercept, because this area at the x-axis independent. So we have to write this equation over here first. 
here, right? The equation here. So T is equal to H W delta theta over P plus A this. So this is the gradient and this is the y-intercept. According to this, y is equal to mx plus c. Now, you can sketch a rough graph. So x-axis area, y-axis time. So it has a positive gradient and positive y-intercept. So this is the line. And then we will write the conclusion if the graph is a straight line with gradient h w delta theta over p and the, and the y-intercept z delta theta over p, then the relation is justified. But to calculate Z, to determine Z, we will use the equation, this y-intercept is Z delta theta over P, mean this Z is equal to P times y-intercept divided by delta theta, where power is current multiplied by voltage, to so current from the ammeter and voltage from the voltmeter, and delta theta is recorded from the thermometer, change of temperature. And for the W, we will use the equation, gradient is equal to H W delta theta over P. So the W is equal to P power times gradient divided by height, which can be determined by this uh, vernier caliper and the change of temperature. So H is the height of the cylinder. We can determine this W. And the next is safety precaution. Heat insulated gloves must be used to handle the hot operators to avoid any skin burn because it is heat experiment. Next important is the good design feature improvement. And the first is the Meyer diameter of the cylinder in different orientation position and then take average of the D. Number two, repeat the experiment for the same area, same change of temperature, record time, and then take the average. But this is a difficult procedure. Then stir the water to get the uniform temperature throughout the length of the cylinder. And the last, wrap the beaker with insulating material to reduce the loss of the heat energy in the surrounding. So this is question number one. I can now move to the next question, question number two. A student investigate the current in the circuit containing a cell, just one cell. The student connects two resistors, R1 and R2, P and Q. The ammeter measures the current. Student repeats the experiment with different values of P and Q. And it is suggested that I, R1, R2 are related by this equation. So E is the electromotive force of the cell and R is the internal resistance of the cell. A graph is plotted one over I on the y-axis, R1 plus R2 at the x-axis. So it's Again, already solved for you. I explained this. Look, this I can be shifted to this side. So it is uh, E divided by I, R1 plus R2 plus R. Then this E is divided here, R1 plus R2 divided by E, and plus this small R internal resistance divided by E. So this is required at the X axis. This is required at the Y axis. So this portion is the gradient. And this portion is the y-intercept when it is compared with the linear equation, y is equal to mx plus c, so one mark part. The gradient is one over e, e is the EMF, r over e, where r is the internal resistance. Now I'll move to the table. Look, values of r and r2 are given. Each resistance value has the percentage uncertainty 5%, I mean each resistor has 5% error. So First, calculate the 5% of each, 5% of 22, 22, 22, 33, 33, 5% of 47. Then 33, 5%, 47, 5%, 56, 5%, 47, 56, 5%, 47, 56, 5%, okay. And then we have to add. So add 32 and, and 22, it is 55, add is also added. So it becomes plus minus approximately three. And similarly, add R1 plus R2, adders are also added and calculate our all values for R1 plus R2. And here, the next, this column, this is milliampere. So we have to calculate a one over I, ampere power minus one unit. So look, one divided by 17.2 into 10 power minus three due to the milli. When this 10 power three comes up, it becomes 1000. So 1000 divided by 17.2, 58.1. 
1000 divided by 14.2, this answer. 1000 divided by 12.8, 78.1. 1000 divided by 12.4, this answer. 1000 divided by this, 1000. So this is the table. So we have to complete this table. And R1 plus R2 has uncertainty. So this done. Next, plot the graph of 1 over i against R1 plus R2. So now look at the graph. The graph is between R1 plus R2 and i. So y-axis and x-axis. So first plot the points. This black line is the best fit. So its points are there. So first point, then second point, then third point, fourth point, fifth point, and then sixth point. And then we have to draw the error bars. Look, the errors are in this quantity, I mean we have to draw the horizontal error bar because they are with the horizontal axis, mean the x axis quantity. So first of all, we will calculate the error scale constant. Number of the small boxes divided by difference of the reading. For example, we take 10 small boxes and the difference of the reading is also 10. So very simple one. Now multiply this error scale constant with error. Look, the first error is three. So error bar length each side three, three, four, four, five, and five each side. So now look at the bar. This is the first point. So the three boxes right and three boxes left, this error bar. Then three boxes right, three boxes left. And similarly here, four boxes right, left, four boxes right, left, and then five boxes left, right, five boxes left, right, this is the bar, okay? So you have to multiply the error scale constant with the error. That is the size of the error, each side of the point, left, right. And then we have to draw the best fit line. So this black line is the best fit line and the red line. So you have to join this top right side error bar and the bottom left error bar, left side of the error bar. So this is a verse fit. So these are the two lines, then you have to label it. One is the BFL, best fit line, another the WL, verse fit line. And then the question is, determine the gradient of the line of the best fit, include the absolute uncertainty in your answer. So we have to select two points of the best fit and two points for the worst fit for the gradient. So first come to the best fit. Let's suppose this point is selected for the best fit P1 and it's coordinate triple one and one zero five. So you have to read this from the axis. And the second point is this here. And this is 60 and 62.5, this point. These are the two best fit points for the gradient. And then select two worst fit points for the gradients. For this is B3. It is 102 at the x-axis and 95 at the y-axis. And then this B4, this is 60 at the x-axis, uh, this, sorry, this is 55 at the x-axis and 60 at the y-axis, so this is a point. And then we have to copy these points, P1, P2, P3 over here. Look, P1, P2 for the best fit, P3, P4 for the worst fit, and then gradient, best fit, Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1, so after the calculation, this is the answer for the best fit gradient. And then worst fit, this calculation, this is coming 0.745. Now this is the actual answer of the gradient. And the difference of these two is this 0 0.088. But when we will write it one significant figure, then 
it is approximately 0.1. So this is the answer for the gradient. Now, the next part is determine the bi-intercept of the line of the best fit, include the absolute uncertainty in your answer. So first, equation is y is equal to mx plus c. So the y-intercept will be y minus mx. So now take any point from the best fit. So I took 60 at the x-axis, 62.5 at the y-axis. One of the point from P1 and P2, and the gradient is, after the calculation, the gradient of the best fit is coming 12.5. Similarly, for the worst fit, any point P3, P4, X coordinate 55, and the Y is 60, and the worst fit gradient is 0.74. This is coming 19.0. Now, this is the actual answer of the y-intercept. And the difference of these two is the uncertainty. Units not required. Now, move to the next using the answer to C to A, C3, C4. Determine E and R include the appropriate unit. Look, the gradient we have done one over E. So E is equal to one over gradient. So one divided by 0 0.833. The answer is coming 1.20. So 1.20. This is the EMF. It's mentioned the question. So the unit volt. And then y intercept is R over E. So R is EMF times y-intercept. EMF is 1.2, and the y-intercept is coming 12.5 for the best fit. So the multiplication of these two is 15. R is internal resistance. It's an ohm. Now, the next part is determine the absolute uncertainty in E. Look, E is calculated from the gradient. So gradient is 1 over E. It means the percentage uncertainty in E is exactly equal to the gradient percentage uncertainty. So the gradient percentage uncertainty, gradient error is 0.1 divided by gradient time 100, it's 12%. Mean the delta E, the absolute uncertainty in EMF is 12% of 1.2. So it is coming 0 0.14. And then the last part is, experiment is repeated using the same cell the value of the R1 is 20 ohm. Determine the resistance R2. That would give you a current of 7.5 milliampere. So first write this original equation, this one. EMF, we have calculated 1.2. And I current is given 7.5 milli, so 7.5 10 power minus 3. R1 is given here, 22. R2 is required. And in terms of resistance calculated, 15. So after the calculation, this R2 is coming 123 and you're already there. Oh, so this is question number two.